Hello everyone, today I'll be talking about unsupervised KNN, K nearest neighbors algorithm and its potential application in anomaly detection. Okay, let's get started. KNN algorithm is all about finding nearest neighbors. In supervised KNN, we know the labels of classes, like blue and green in this example, and we want to know the new observation would belong to which class. For example, if we look at the three nearest neighbors of this red point, uh, we'll see that two of them are blue neighbors and one is green. So we can conclude that the class for this red point is blue. In unsupervised KNN, the question would be a bit different. And our goal is usually to measure how far we are from the whole population. So for example, if a new point is far from the rest of the population, this could be a sign of abnormality for that point. For example, if we look at the two nearest neighbors of this red point here, we will see that the average distance from its nearest neighbors is about 5, but if we look at another point like this, the average distance is much less than previous point. So we can conclude that the first red point is more anomalous than the second one. But how many nearest neighbors we should look at? For example, in this case, in this example, if we choose k equal to 2, average distance would stay almost the same or very small number. And if you want to compare it with other points average distance, it's going to be very uh, similar or uh, it's not going to trigger any uh, anomalous behavior. So um, in practice, you should try different values of k. Uh, for this specific one, maybe you try 4. If you have to look at four neighbors, then you're not going to be just bounded to this cluster here. And uh, the next one is going to be probably this point. So on average, these four or five points are going to give you some measure of abnormalities for this point. Another point before going to the code section is the computational complexity of the KNN. Even though KNN seems to be a very simple algorithm, but it is not trivial to find those nearest neighbors. In fact, our code should calculate the distance for all points and then rank them to find the closest, the closest ones. So uh, this could be very expensive if you have lots of observations and features. And in practical applications, we have to limit the search space. There are different methods to, to do that, to limit the search space. And most of them try to find a subspace in a smart way that uh, you can just look at the neighbors in that subspace. For example, we can start dividing the first feature by its median and then second feature by its median and keep doing this until you have smaller subspaces. Now for any new point, it would be very quick to know which region it is located in. So you don't have to measure the distance to points in other regions. Of course, this method could make mistakes, for instance, on points close to the boundary of these regions. But in many applications, we have to accept uh, there is a trade-off between complexity and accuracy. All right, now we have the basic knowledge about KNN. So we can take a look at SKLearn, scikit-learn, and the way uh, we can use uh, that code in practical applications. Okay, let's first import a few libraries that we will use down the road. Uh, things like NumPy and Pandas, Matplotlib, and Nearest Neighbors. 
Now let's look at the data set that we have, the sample data set. Uh, it's a 2D uh, data set which we can uh, better visualize it with, let's say, using um, scatter plot. But as usual, Scikit-Learn likes it in NumPy array format, so we convert everything, the data frame, to NumPy arrays. Now we can use scatter plot of first and second column. In order to use KNN algorithm, it is better to take a look at the scikit-learn documentation. If you click on this, as usual, there are different parameters for tuning and limiting, uh, and most of these are gonna be useful for limiting your search space. Uh, we will leave them as default and use number of neighbors as three, for example, in this case. Let's go back to the code. And let's define a neighbor object as this. Which shows three neighbors. Now we can fit the object as usual with X, which uh, we had it uh, previously because we are using, uh, this is the x, we are using the unsupervised method. The fit method is gonna take only x. And after this, obviously we can use k neighbors to define what are the neighbors for this x. And if you look at it, you're going to see there is array and the second array. So you're going to say two arrays. The first one is the distance. And the second one is indexes. If you look at the first column of the distance matrix, you're going to see these are zeros. And what it means is basically the observation, each observation, uh, the distance between this observation and it itself is zero. And the distance to the next neighbor is not zero. And also the third one. All right, now let's save these two arrays, NumPy arrays, the distance and indexes as this, these two parameters. Now we can plot the mean of these distances over uh, columns. Columns are our neighbors. So we have three neighbors in this case, and we want to look at the mean of those values for each observation, which is uh, stored in our rows. If we do this, you're going to see we have uh, a figure like this. So we can say, for example, these points after 200 looks abnormal points because they are far from the rest of the population. And we can filter them with where clause in uh, NumPy. Uh, we know we can put np.where Uh, where distance distances dot mean over uh, columns, which again is our neighbors greater than 0.5, which shows the indexes of those values that are greater than 0.5 uh, and this distance can be different this threshold can be different for different applications but let's say we uh, use that 0.5 for this case to just capture these points 
Now we can store these into index, say anomaly index, ABN index. And we can look at the scatter plot of the original data set. And later we can add, uh, we can plot red points in locations that we, uh, we have already filtered with abnormal index. So we can uh, change these points to uh, abnormal index. and say edge color is red, okay? So the problem is we don't have the correct spelling. It is interesting if you look at this point here, uh, which with three neighbors, it is considered as normal uh, point, uh, since the average of distance for, uh, for this point from uh, its neighbors probably is less than 0.5. Uh, so let's change the number of K uh, to five neighbors uh, then we're going to have a better chance of looking at things around it more, not just these two, three points. All right, if we change the neighbors to five, and we run all these calcs again, you see that the point now is anomaly point, because uh, the on average five neighbors or four because the first one is itself four neighbors around it on average is gonna have uh, they're gonna have mean distance of larger than 0.5 which we have decided to trigger as anomalous points unsupervised KNN can be used in time series data as well uh, so let's take a look at this example where it shows three sensors they are recording uh, quantities they can be uh, voltage current uh, temperature or whatever over time when we usually import things uh, through csv files and read csv uh, these time objects are going to be as strings now we can convert them back to date time uh, so this line is to make sure that uh, the index, the index of our data frame is going to be converted to date time quantity because uh, this is very useful method when you especially want to uh, resample your data frame to weeks, days, or uh, any multiple number of these uh, quantities, say two days average of two days or some over uh, three weeks or whatever you want so this is very useful method I usually uh, like to do that before uh, doing uh, other analysis now if I run this and if I look at the type of my index now you see it is already converted to date time index Now, similar to previous section, we can uh, first convert the data frame to NumPy array and then uh, create and fit, uh, create nearest neighbors object with, uh, with number of neighbors as five and algorithm as ball three, and then fit this object with uh, hold the data set, the, X data set and then we can look at its neighbors same X no label unsupervised on the same object that we 
uh, created. And it's going to give us distances and indexes as usual. And if we look at, if we just uh, create another column, this is the new column on the Oak data frame. We call it KNN Health. You can call it anything, anything. Um, but it's basically coming from the mean over columns as before. Uh, these columns, these five columns are going to be neighbors. So we average or uh, we do the mean over columns. So for each observation, you, you can have the uh, mean distance from neighbors and you store it in this new column. Now we can plot the new column. If you do that, you see that it's going to be um, similar to this. Um, horizontal axis is time. So this is uh, month and day. Uh, the year was, I believe, 2020. Yes. April of 2020. And we can again, uh, similar to the previous uh, section, we can set the thresholds uh, to probably one here. Uh, again, this is very dependent on your application. But let's say we are plotting, uh, we are using AX horizontal span uh, function of uh, matplotlib and we are plotting from one to maximum of these numbers which is probably two two and a half or something like that and we are using alpha as 0.2 uh, to just be a bit transparent there and uh, red color if i plot this you're going to see that th these points are red and this is similar uh, this is a bit um, uh, not similar to other methods probably on other methods your health uh, your green is uh, at top if it is health index this is probably uh, we can call it uh, risk in index or whatever because if you are larger than one it means that you are far from uh, the normal points that's why we uh, plot these red points uh, for any number greater than one not less than one all right this should do it for uh, KNN we talked about supervised and unsupervised KNN uh, what they mean and how we can use unsupervised KNN for uh, anomaly detection if you have any questions, please comment below and I'll get back to you soon. Thanks for watching.